Now to the heated battle over reproductive and abortion rights. It's a debate that has been playing out heavily in many states over the past year. Virginia is the latest, as national attention has focused on a proposed law. A furor gripped Virginia's state legislature in recent days as Republicans pushed to mandate ultrasound testing, which would be internal for many women seeking abortions. On Monday, more than a thousand people, mostly women, held a silent protest against the bill outside the state capitol in Richmond. Oh man, transvaginal ultrasound? And the proposal quickly drew the attention of national television, including The Daily Show. With criticism rising, Virginia's Republican governor, Bob McDonnell, mentioned as a potential vice presidential nominee, yesterday announced he had changed his mind. He issued a statement that read, quote, mandating an invasive procedure in order to give informed consent is not a proper role for the state. Instead, McDonnell said the bill should, quote, explicitly state that no woman in Virginia will have to undergo a transvaginal ultrasound involuntarily. Within hours, Virginia's House of Delegates did just that, passing a version that requires the more traditional external abdominal ultrasound, but makes the transvaginal test optional. The amendment, um, I believe, enhances the bill. It's still consistently pro-life. Democratic opponents said even the amended legislation calls for a pointless procedure. What you have done is mandated for any abortion done early in a pregnancy an ultrasound that will be utterly useless. According to the Guttmacher Institute, which studies reproductive health issues, Texas is the only state that effectively enforces a transvaginal ultrasound before abortions. Arizona, Kansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida require an ultrasound, but leave it to the physician to determine the type. Are you proud of your position? Yes, I am. But the battle in Virginia highlights nationwide efforts to roll back access to abortions and related services. Last year, 24 states imposed new curbs on abortion services. They included bans, waiting periods, and clinic regulations. Many states also cut funding to family planning services and providers. The next state to enter the fray may be Pennsylvania, where lawmakers may require ultrasounds at least 24 hours before an abortion. A vote is expected sometime in April. For more on the battle over these questions in Virginia and nationally, we turn to Charmaine Yoast. She's president of Americans United for Life, which backs the proposed Virginia law. And Nancy Keenan, she's president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, which opposes it. And we thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you. you. What has made this Virginia legislation such a flashpoint, Nancy Keenan? I think, look, they've overreached in Virginia. And we saw that the other day when over a thousand and more people showed up to express their disappointment. And I think this is a place where a state law is requiring a woman to undergo a procedure that she didn't ask for, nor that her doctor recommended, and that these are politicians that are practicing medicine without a license. Was it an overreach, Charmaine Yost? Absolutely not. And it is very political, and it's because it's an election season. And it's because Virginia is a swing state in this election. And so the pro-abortion force forces are trying very hard to pursue a disinformation campaign about this law. This is a protective law that is working to protect women's health to ensure that they get the gold standard of medical care prior to an abortion. So you're saying it's about medical care. You're saying it's what? It's about it's, what? It's, it's about a forced procedure. I think, you know, they talk about it being informed consent. It is neither. This is not about information, nor is it about consent. Women are going to be forced against their will to undergo a procedure again, that she didn't ask for. It is not medically necessary, nor did the doctor recommend. And I think this is where politicians don't belong in that, in that, in that place with, between a woman and her doctor in this decision. Charmaine, just, Yost, are you saying that the, that the procedure would not have been required? Is that what your argument is here? I just don't even know how Nancy can say this in good conscience in terms of protecting women's health. Look, the chairman of the Americans United for Life's board is an OBGYN. Our attorneys have been working on this bill, and so I can tell you exactly what it's all about. 
Ultrasounds are the gold standard for protecting women's health. You need to have an ultrasound prior to an abortion in order to determine the gestational age of the baby. You need to know where, where the baby's located. Um, there's a host of just standard medical practice for ensuring that the woman is safe. <clears throat> One thing, Judy, that many people may not know is that the FDA has noted that at least two women have died um, after being given chemical abortion uh, after having an ectopic preg pregnancy. So this protects a woman's life. This is a very, very serious situation. So what I'm hearing is that it's, it's important for the well-being of the woman to have this ultrasound. Well, let me tell you, this is about women and a decision that is with her doctor. These are politicians who think they know the situation of every woman in this country, whether it's in Virginia or across this country, that they know the situation. They know what's going on in her life. They know what's going on with her medical situation. And again, these are politicians that are, are wanting to mandate mandate a procedure no. that she did not ask for, nor did the doctor say was necessary. In fact, Governor McDonnell of Virginia said in <clears> his <throat> statement it would mandate an invasive procedure in order to give informed cons consent. Well, Nancy is misrepresenting what the bill would do. And again, our attorneys worked on this bill, so I can tell you it did not mandate and does not at this point mandate what kind of sonogram. It simply mandates that the standard of care is followed. So it does leave it up to the doctor to decide what kind of sonogram is needed in that situation to for him to get the information that he needs to ensure that the woman's health is protected. So are you saying the governor is incorrect in his statement? I'm saying that the, what the bill does is mandate a sonogram, and the doctor decides. It's based on a standard of care. If you call Planned Parenthood in Virginia, they always do a sonogram before an abortion because that's that's the so gold standard. So then, why do you need the state law? Then why are you? Why are th these folks that are advancing this kind of legislation requiring a woman? Requiring? There's no there's no informed consent here. There's no decision. She is mandated by the law to have a procedure. It, it, I'd love to answer that question. Right, very quickly, because I want to I broaden this out and ask mm -hmm. about the moves that are, that are taking place nationally. Did you want to comment just briefly well, it is again? When you think about nationally, we see women who die from, and think about Kermit Gosnell and the House of Horrors in Philadelphia with abortion clinics that are I'm horribly I'm not familiar un, with. He's, he's, on, he's on, uh, on trial now for women who died um, in his abortion clinic. Some of these abortion clinics are very, very dangerous places for women, and we need to protect their health by ensuring ensuring that a standard of care is followed and sonograms are the gold standard. I want to ask you, uh, Nancy Keenan, about moves as we reported in, what, 24 states to discourage abortion through right. one uh, requirement or another. Or another. Right. What concerns you uh, and your organization and others who agree with you about We that? have seen twice as many anti-choice pieces of legislation passed in 2011 than we did in 2010. I think that these are folks that ran for office, whether it was the state legislature or here in Congress ran on jobs in the economy and now are absolutely attacking women's health and particularly reproductive health. The hypocrisy here. At the same time that they want to uh, mandate women to undergo an ultrasound, they are also trying to defund family planning, access to birth control. There's a hypocrisy here. If so are you saying there's a coordinated true. effort Abs nationwide Absolutely. To do this? There is a strategy to defund women having access to birth control and family planning, at the same time making all of these barriers so women can access a legal a legal procedure in this country. Is that what's taking place? The problem is, is that the abortion lobby is afraid that a woman having access to a sonogram might be dissuaded by having the full information about her baby's development and about the abortion procedure. But across the board, nationally, with these other uh, requirements that have, or have been proposed or enacted, uh, longer waiting time. Uh, we mentioned some of the other we ways. Have 20, we saw 28 pieces of AUL-based legislation pass this last year, and it, there is has, has been a dramatic up, uh, and increase. And how much of that is coordinated across the country? Well, there was a huge influx of pro-life legislators who were elected by the people, so they're responding to their constituents who want to see greater protections um, across the board. We're talking about parental consent, um, informed consent, things that people, the vast majority of the American people do support. This is so out of touch with America's priorities and values. Americans are saying, look, we elected you to, to fix the economy and jobs, and these folks have shown up, um, again, attacking uh, health care for women. And that the priorities and values are people say, stay out of the business between a doctor, 
a woman, her family, uh, stay out of this relationship and the decisions we make with, with regard to our health care that is based on the freedom and privacy in this country. What is the goal of these state-by-state -state efforts, Charmaine Yost? Is it, is it to get as close as possible to practically overturn Roe versus Wade? What, what, it, what would you say is the, is the goal? I think it's responding to the fact that the majority of the American people um, say that they're pro-life and there is a huge consensus in this country on common sense regulations on abortion like sonogram. Sonogram laws are in 22 states have passed um, because the American people think this is common sense, things that we can all agree on just no matter what uh, your opinion on abortion is, informed consent, parental consent, these are things that uh, the American people do agree on. Nancy Keenan, mm -hmm. if this is the result of individuals elected the state legislature mm -hmm. and they're doing what they believe mm -hmm. it's the political process it is it? and elections matter and I think you're going to see that as we head into 2012 whether it's the presidential and the difference in having somebody like President Obama who believes in the freedom and privacy and uh, of, of a woman's right to choose and or these these legislators at the state level who also have an agenda here to put barriers in front of women to deny them to deny them the privacy of their doctor relationship in choosing a legal abortion in this country, and it's wrong. I can't understand why, when you see situations where women have died at the hands of abortionists in this country, that you wouldn't be behind ensuring that they get the highest standard of medical care um, when you know that that's been a problem across the country. Judy, this is not about medical care. This is about harassment, coercion, and, and intimidating women intimidating when you force a procedure and then force them to sign a waiver that says they will listen to the heartbeat, to force to have to look at a, at a, at a, a, a sonogram. Um, this is not about protecting women. This is about a forced medical procedure and it's wrong. I don't think you should be afraid for women to have informed consent and to know everything they need to know before a medical procedure. We're going to leave it there. We thank you both very much uh, for being here. Nancy Keenan. Thank you. Charmaine Yost. Thank you.